Well, I think the essence of any great thriller is you can't predict what's going to happen next. And I often find, uh, and this is no insult to uh, um, the movies that are out there, but I often find that thrillers are quite predictable, or certainly action films anyway. And especially when you get to the third act, you kind of know exactly what's going to happen. The hero's going to win. This is going to go down. And, and in this script, I was genuinely thrilled all the way through. I genuinely didn't know what was going to happen next. And it had great characters. It had a very topical setting, uh, a war between Russia and America, which... Uh, I hope doesn't look imminent at the moment, but um, there's certainly rumblings in that direction. So I thought it was topical, I thought it was exciting, uh, great characters. I'm a big fan of Gerard Butler, who was attached to the film. Uh, and so I really wanted to do it from the moment I read it. There are two classes of submarines, nuclear submarines. They're the boomers, and they launch the big ballistic missiles. And then they're the hunter-killers, which are the submarines that search and destroy. They also carry missiles, but their main task is reconnaissance. So they go into the field completely silently. In fact, there's probably a few out there in Russian waters that we shouldn't know about. And they do many things from chasing other submarines or just to see what's going on. They also have war capability. They can fight, they can shoot. Uh, and so they hunt and they kill. It's quite a complex setup and complex story, which is also what attracted me to this film. It really follows, uh, it follows three storylines. Uh, there's a, a submarine captain played by Gerald Butler. There's a group of Navy SEALs. There is a war room plot uh, with Common, who plays an admiral, and uh, Gary Oldman, who plays the chairman of Joint Chiefs of Staff. And it's about how the three of them come together uh, to avoid a potential event that could cause World War III. Yeah, you know, a big part of my pitch was authenticity, and I think... These days, viewers demand much more reality in their, in their media content. I don't know what, why that is. Maybe it's reality television or, you know, I think it takes more for people to invest emotionally in something. They've got to feel like, A, this is real and authentic, and B, that this is a situation that could really occur. And, yeah, people are savvy and smart. They can go online. People know a lot more about what submarines look like and, you know, how the Navy and the military work. And so, you know... As a director, you want to move the audience. And in order to move the audience, I felt the movie had to be absolutely authentic and real. And I wanted the interior of our submarine to look exactly like a real uh, nuclear submarine. I wanted people to talk in the way that they do talk on board those submarines and for the commands to be issued exactly like they would be. Uh, and I think even though a lot of the audience might not know exactly what that terminology is, they know it when they hear it because it just has that crack of realness because these are commands and ways of speaking that have been honed over the years by the military. And so I wanted to go underway. I went on a submarine for three days. Me and Jerry Butler went on a, on a nuclear sub. And they took us out to sea for maneuvers and actually reenacted all the scenes from the film in the submarine and took us and fired fake torpedoes and did all that stuff. Um, and that was invaluable uh, for me as I created the film and imagined the film and brought as much of that realness uh, to how I executed it. I had an amazing production design on this film. He was absolutely superb. Uh, and he came with me right from the very beginning as we went to look at you know, the, the National Military Command Center, as we went on board these nuclear submarines. And we just wanted something that felt, yeah, this, and it's an amazing thing when you go in that submarine. It's not how you would quite imagine it. And maybe movies are to blame. You watch Crimson Tide and it looks like a Corvette inside there. Everything's chrome and perfect. And when you're in a submarine, it's it's... It's not made for beauty. It's made for being a practical war machine. And, it, and no expense has been spared in terms of the technology of the machine, but they don't care about how beautiful it looks. And so it's quite industrial inside there. And they're just wires and pipes and things just nailed to the wall wherever you look. And I really wanted to capture that feel because it's got a certain energy and a power to it. And it's quite surprising as well. So I wanted to get a bit of that. Uh, and then I wanted to echo that through and we saw the Russian, um, there's a lot of Russian uh, ships, he's a huge destroyer that we see and those Russian ships were built in the 80s, you know, and, uh, and they don't quite look like the high tech ships you might imagine and yet they have this nuclear capability and they have the latest ballistic missiles on board. And so it was trying to capture that, that juxtaposition of, of industrial versus high tech uh, and that was really our vision. I think you associate Jerry with playing a lot of big action heroes and uh, in this he plays a submarine captain and so he's confined into the space of the submarine. Um, he's still the action guy who makes it all happen but he does it from a position of authority rather than the guy out there pulling the trigger. Uh, and so it required, it, it required Jerry to contain his performance which I think he did absolutely beautifully. I think he's a very powerful performer. Uh, uh, he completely invests himself in every situation and I think that's amazing because in, in Every scene that Jerry's in, there's 20 or 30 people 
as crew around him all the time. And because Jerry invests so strongly in the moment, you could just see everybody else kind of believing they were in the submarine, even though it's a set, you know, on a, on a bit of hydraulics. Uh, so he's amazing in the part, and he's a very, very good actor.